Hi, welcome to Julius Bar. Today we're gonna mix a Davis share. So, the Devil's Share is a cocktail created by Pete Kendall at the Match Bar in London, England in 2006. I think it takes its name from the opposite of the Angel's Share, which is that part of alcohol where you lose while aging whiskey or other alcoholic aged spirits. It features ginger and he has a name with the devil inside. And it's almost Halloween, so let's get down to mixing it. So let's start by chopping a couple of slices of ginger and uh, maybe a bit more. Let's also cut it a bit smaller so it's easier to muddle in the bottom of our shaker. A bit more, come on. I think a bit like this. And let's muddle it in the bottom of our shaker. Maximum effort. Yes, I think they work out fine. And then we go with 12.5 milliliters of maple syrup. Delicious maple syrup. Then 22.5 milliliter of the freshly squeezed orange juice and 22.5 milliliters of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Then we finish with 60 milliliters of bourbon. In this case, the classic Maker's Mark, Maker's Mark, the wheated classic bourbon whiskey. I really like this. And uh, we are already done. Let's get some ice. And let's give this bad boy a shake. Let's double strain our cocktail over some nice ice. And I'm gonna try to express some orange peel, even though this orange is pretty lame. I'm just gonna express a bit and then discard it because it's not pretty. And there you go, a devil's share. Cheers. Let me have one more sip. Hold on a second, the first sip was terrible. The second sip was a bit better. I don't know, something's going on here. Let me spend a few more seconds with this cocktail. I still think something is off. I mean, this is like a straightforward old fashioned variation. Did I put too much ginger or too little ginger? I used the organic ginger. Is it possibly different than normal ginger? Yeah, I really think that ginger is off because otherwise it tastes like a good cocktail. The ginger gives it a bitterness that shouldn't be there. It should be spicy, not bitter. Let me move it a second to a cocktail glass. And let me have one more sip. This is better? I'm scratching my head. I I'm now I'm starting to think that maybe that big rock of ice I put maybe it was some time it was in the freezer. Maybe it's his fault. Maybe. This is tasting way better now. I 
I'm gonna suck on this ice. I don't know, I'm extremely puzzled. I think the debut is acting up my cocktail. I cannot think about any rational reason why my cocktail is changing flavor like this. One more sip. Yeah, this is fine. It's good. I'm so puzzled. Maybe it was either the devil or maybe these eyes as I said, it was uh, hanging out a bit too long in the freezer, refrigerator, and it, on the surface, it got some bitter flavor from something that was in the refrigerator. Because now that I moved it to this glass, it tastes like a nice old-fashioned variation with uh, juice, maple, and a bit of spiciness from the ginger. It's just... Fine. The devil man. The tricky bastard. So my conclusion is this cocktail should be good. I think it's good. But be careful about the devil sneaking in something weird you're not expecting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, share with anybody you like and don't like. Shake yourself a devil infused cocktail and hopefully I will see you next time. Cheers. So I was thinking about the devil in movies because the devil in music will just take me too much time. And uh, I was thinking about the devil in movies when they don't actually say it's the devil. But you come to the conclusion that that character is representing the devil. I was thinking about Billy Bob Thornton in the first season of Fargo, where it's definitely the devil. And by the end, it gives this supernatural feeling to the series. And kind of makes sense. I accepted it. As I accepted the Robert De Niro in the Martin Scorsese's Cape Fear is just the devil incarnated. He appears on the lawn, he disappears, he appears there, he just knows everything and he does everything like this supernatural being. But because of Martin Scorsese's background in Catholicism, I came to accept it. The way he was presented in the movie, he was like, yeah, he's a spawn of the devil. He's evil incarnate. And he made sense. What doesn't make sense to me, it's how, for example, sometimes you have these characters that have nothing to do with uh, religion. They have nothing to do with the superpowers, but they act like they know everything, they can do everything, and they can wreck upon the main character, the good character of the movie, like they, they know everything. And it comes to mind the Joker in The Dark Knight. Joker knows everything, acts like he's a supernatural being, but we don't have a justification for that. Batman should be an extremely rational series. It's an extremely rational character. It's the Earth best detective. So when you introduce supernatural-like actions, it starts becoming less believable and it took me out of the movie. Every scene where Keith Ledger was talking, top-notch. He, he, he really gave the greatest and last performance of his life. But how many times I'm talking about Christopher Nolan in these videos? I think too much. Sorry. Hope you don't get bored. <laughs>